we don't really want to talk about it. It's just not something <laughs> we're really into. Like, this was not by choice. I want everyone to know. This was by force. Force of what? Force of you. Force of Tiffany. Force of me. A force of nature. <laughs> they have done us dirty. Look at us. Bro, we look like clowns. Okay, <laughs> Tiffany did my makeup and my fiance did Dan Dan's makeup for a vlog. <laughs> and we decided to keep it on for this video because it matched the freaking chicken wings. Hi. Matched the chicken wings. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun, dun, dun. Dun. Ooh, Ooh. Boo boo. Oh, boo. Okay, listen, we got the squid ink chicken wings. They're the black chicken wings. We have these crazy corn dogs. There's a place called Holy Cow and they have these like fruity pebble corn dogs. Mr. Cow. Oh, Mr. Cow. They've got these potato corn dogs, hot cheeto corn dogs, these rice crispy corn dogs. We also have some of these mala chicken nuggets. We have these that are mm. fish balls lamb chops and like the weirdest mix of food we have this sweet biscuit dough that you dip into condensed milk that i'm so excited to try but um i hope you guys can tell that we're all in new york judging by this background and i really used to hate i used to hate plane rides and i never knew what it was i just thought okay it's got to be uncomfortable to be in a metal tin of flying sardines that makes sense but so much of it was just i hated the noise i hated the noise of the plane it was so aggressively loud non-stop and it gave me a headache. And when I started using my Raycon earbuds on the plane, it changed the game, I tell you. Raycon's noise isolation is chef's kisses. Whenever I'm on the plane, I can listen to an audiobook, a full movie, songs, ASMR videos, and really spend my time in that song or that movie. We filmed this Losing One of the Census cooking challenge, oh and he was wearing the Raycon earbuds in them, and he literally could not hear me he screaming into his face. Do a recipe and tell me the ingredients. What? But if you're like me and you get paranoid in public, maybe not on a plane, but in public, maybe you're jogging, maybe you're at home watching your kids or you're running errands and you need to be able to hear everything going on. Raycon also has awareness listening mode so you can hear your music and see what's going on around you. Normally that's how I like to use my Raycons except when I'm on a plane. The best part is you're going to love the sound quality so much that you're never gonna wanna take them out and it's fine. They sit flush in your ear. You can literally fall asleep in them. They do not hurt at all. I get no headaches, no pain. They don't fall out even when I'm running around, jumping around, or if I'm on a plane and my head is constantly knocking around like this because I'm falling asleep, okay? You get eight hours of playtime, 32 <laughs> hours of battery life, and they're Siri and Alexa compatible, so you can even take a call or switch your song or turn up the volume with a simple touch. All of that comes at a super affordable price compared to other premium wireless earbuds in the market. And Raycon has over 50,000 five-star reviews. Make sure to go to buyraycon.com slash bis to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash bis to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the video. Okay, we're gonna go for the corn dogs. I gotta go for the fruity pebbles. Here, can you take this hot Cheetos? Yeah. And then Den Den, I'm gonna give you this rice oh. crisp. Or actually, you want the fruity pebbles? I, I don't. Try I the like fruity it. I pebbles. like it all. He said he likes the colorful one, okay? I remember while I was pulling these out. Okay, this is the rice crispy oh one. God. Oh my god. This is different. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro. Mm. Bro, I love it. This place is really creative. Cereal. I've never had something like that before, okay? Assuming this oh is a regular. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Bro, this is a genius idea. Mm. On Mine a corn dog. These taste so good. Even the regular tastes good, so I'm assuming they're doing something, you know? It's so fluffy on the inside. It's kind of crazy. How are the cereal ones? Do you like the Fruity Pebbles? Mm-hmm. So good. It's like sweet. It's sweeter than the. It's extra sweeter. Mm -hmm. mm. You wanna try this, babe? Mm -hmm. Look at look at the cheese. What the heck? I love that one. Wait. Wow. What's that gooey stuff? It's I hot thought it was just Cheetos, hot Cheetos. But... The bread they use tastes interesting. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Wow, that's wow. delicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we gotta go for a wing because. Why do they look like this? Mm. It's squid ink, but... So it seems like they just put squid ink powder in the mm. flour to make it. So I guess it shouldn't taste too different. Hmm. Mm. It's not bad. I mean, it just kind of tastes like a chicken wing. Yeah. I'm surprised. It looks like burnt chicken wing. It really tastes like fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I wonder if anyone has ever gotten this and complained that their chicken was burnt. <laughs> <laughs> I will try these and then we're gonna get into the first story because we're doing horror showdowns. Well, this is like your horror stories because it's October, so I'm really 
lead it into the spooky season. Mm. 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 Wow, these fish balls, fish balls are delicious. Yeah. Mm. Holy moly. Mm. Yo, try the lamb. Oh, oh god. Holy. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at his lips. Your lip is oh. gone. <laughs> you ate your lips. <laughs> Story number one. In order to tell you about my experiences, I would need to tell you about the legend of the Hawaiian Night Marchers. Have you heard of this? I've heard of the Hawaiian no. Night Marchers. Mm -hmm. Night Marchers are a group of dead Hawaiian soldiers that march down the mountainside after sunset. It's said that the procession is often accompanied with the sound of a conch shell, you know? Rhythmic drumming and chants. Whenever we go around the island in the more rural areas of Hawaii, my dad would tell me and my siblings and I stories about the Night Marchers. Back in the ancient days, Whenever a chief passed through a village, his warriors blew conch shells and beat drums to signify his arrival. Now, as commoners, you were expected to stare at the ground and not make eye contact or else you would suffer the consequences. And that was death. The consequences were death. Now, on to the story. I was 14 at the time and a freshman in high school. We lived pretty close to my high school in a sense that we would only drive up and down a hill just to go to school. And it was a Friday night that night. And I just remember the moon being so bright, so full. I could not fall asleep. But this was pretty normal for me as I often suffered from insomnia time to time. So it was nothing crazy. Now, usually I would just take a walk or open my window and stare at the stars. And I decided to take a walk to tire myself out. Keep in mind, my neighborhood is full of old people and they're usually asleep by like nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. So it was pretty safe for me to walk late at night. I walked down the street onto the main road, which you would take if you were going up or down the mountains. Oh, I forgot to mention that at the top of the mountain is essentially a temple, but this is a historic park and was used as an ancient medical center where native Hawaiians would visit to be healed. So as I'm walking up the mountain, I hear a soft sound of a drum beating and I freeze in fear because it's like two o'clock in the morning, there shouldn't be anyone awake. And two, if this is the sound of the warrior's drum, then that means I'm coming face to face with the night marchers. Oh my God, that was the craziest cheese pull you just had. God oh my God, it's what still the? pulling. What the hell is going on? Why do you always get the best cheese pulls? Yo, for real. So anyway, something my dad always told me that if I were to ever cross paths with the night marchers is to run or hide or lie down in the ground to let them pass and never make eye contact. My legs and hands were shaking terribly with adrenaline, so I knew very well that I would not be able to run away. I found shelter by the closest tree next to me. I lied down on my stomach, my head flat on the ground, and not even 10 <sighs> seconds later, the sound of the drums became louder and louder. And That's I knew, crazy. okay, this is so creepy. And I knew yeah. that they were right beside me. I don't like stories like this because I believe in shit like this. <laughs> it's like if you actually go to Hawaii and let's say you hear drum start beating at night, what do you do? Do you take the risk of just like stand there, like whatever? Or do you actually lay down and try to pretend Play dead. Play dead? You just never know. And that's the thing about Hawaii, and that's the thing about other places. I feel like the more spiritual people are in an area, the mm -hmm. more I believe in the afterlife, like, staying around. Like, the more I believe in ghosts. Because if these people were spiritual when they were alive, I just feel like there's it's, there, it's different. That yeah. freaks me out a bit. Yeah. I didn't move, nor did I make a sound whatsoever. All I could do was pray that they didn't see me and would just continue on their path. It was about maybe a minute until I no longer heard the sound of drums, but me being the little bitch that I was, I didn't move for like a good five minutes. After I was sure that I knew that they were gone, I bolted back up to my street to my bed, but because I was so shaken up and I was so scared, I waited until the sunrise in order to fall asleep. Later on, I told my grandma about it, about what happened. She told me what I heard that night was in fact, the passing of the night marchers. She said that they were the most active during a full moon and near sacred sites such as that temple. She told me that she also had an encounter with the night watchers when she was younger. She saw the torches descending down the mountain Whoa. and stopped. But I will never forget what I experienced that night, nor will I ever forget the sound of a beating drum. Whenever I tell people about my experience, many say how lucky I was to avoid the wrath of the night marchers. Okay, that's so creepy. That's kind of creepy. So Night Watcher is actually a real thing. I feel like it is. I've heard so much about the Night Watchers. Really? I've heard Hawaii has a lot of more like paranormal stuff going on. Dang. There's just so much history there. Natives, I heard, are incredibly spiritual people. I actually wanted to go to Hawaii. Me too. I mean, it's so beautiful. 
I think it's like paradise, but you just gotta respect the the traditions and the customs, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard that's why, as like a tourist, you shouldn't do like a specific list of things. Like you shouldn't go at night to certain places because you don't know what you're doing, you know. Okay, second one. Growing up, my parents didn't even care about me and my siblings' dental health. Okay, wow. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Why? I don't know. This is like really. This is more sad than it is scary bits. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Oh, okay, here we go. It gets better. It's because we grew up with good, healthy set of teeth. Maybe that's why. I had one very bad teeth when I was young, and it was because my grandparents raised me due to some financial circumstances my parents were facing at the time. They never weaned me off bottle feeding until I was old enough to eat, which led my baby teeth to having cavities. It was nasty. I mean, I looked like a piranha. LOL. But one day, my parents took me back again, but ignoring the fact that I have rotten teeth. As a child, I am not really self-conscious until people started to tease me. And of course, I suffered from toothaches most of the time. My parents at the time began to worry and had my teeth checked by a good dentist. And they said, you know, good thing that they're just baby teeth. They'll start to fall off. So they did. But still growing up, I didn't really form a habit of taking care of my teeth or have dental checkups. I always had a bad tooth or two that needed a filling or an extraction and I would experience my face swell up just in time for a class photo. I would look like poop because I can't smile and if anything, I looked like I was in pain in that video or in that photo. When I was in college, the problem still occurs and my college life was stressful. Lots of sleepless nights and stress. I mean, it just took a toll on me. One time, I was doing an excitement very, very late at night when I started to yawn. I opened my mouth so big and I breathed in all this air that my brain needed. Then I heard a click. And when I tried to close my mouth, I couldn't. It was so painful, my jaw locked. I can feel what? how my jaw was dislocated from its original placement. I tried to close my jaw, but it was so painful. I tried to massage it, but it felt so weird touching that dislocated part of my face. I panicked, woke my mom up, and she was in deep sleep, and I told her as the best that I could, mm-hmm. because, you know, I couldn't really speak right now, right, that I'm having locked jaw. She thought that I was saying that I swallowed a mouse. What? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> okay, maybe it's got to be a different language, cause <laughs> mouse out of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she can talk. Uh huh. I know, but maybe she was like mumbling. Mhm. Yeah. Um. Oh. Mouth. Mouse. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. There's no way. Okay. Ready? I I can't go my mouth. I swallowed a mouse. Okay, that sounds like mouth, yeah. Oh my gosh, so good, okay. okay. But when she realized my situation, we immediately went to the ER and the travel alone was painful. Every moment I made, I can feel it in my jaw. Every movement I made, I could feel it in my jaw. My saliva was dripping out of my mouth because I really couldn't even close my lips. At the ER, they asked me to have an x-ray and while doing that, they asked me a few times to close my lips like it was possible. What? I tried because I have to then, and the horrific x-ray was done. They saw that my lower jaw was obviously dislocated. They injected me a drug to help me with the pain while they were trying to realign my face. One doctor asked me to sit on a small chair on the floor, and he basically righted my jaw with his thumbs, pushing my lower jaw and pulling it to where it should be. You know, that's what they do when you break a nose. That's what I heard. What? Yeah, I heard when they you break a nose, they have to like realign it. So if you like, and, and it snaps out of place, they have to it back. Yeah. I've seen people like their joints. That's oh, so scary. Oh, the worst, no? oh, Imagine oh. your arm. Oh. <sighs> now I, I think I think when you re, like when you're trying to realign it, you you like wear like a like oh, a tape, mm-hmm. oh, like a bandage, like a bandage, mm-hmm. like ben, bandage. Mm. I said bandaid. Oh my god. The drug didn't really help. During that moment, I was about to collapse from the pain, and they injected me a second dose. After that, everything seemed blurry and slow, and I just felt heavy. I guess that helped because the doctors fixed my jaw, and I could no longer resist and just cry in pain. When that click happened, it was the most wonderful feeling ever. Imagine having to close your mouth after hours of it being open and salivating over nothing. The relief I felt during that time was still the best feeling ever. They wrapped a bandage around my chin over my head to keep it from moving again because it was still very swollen and just in case I needed to yawn again. Now, back to having poor dental health awareness. My current dentist told me that I have TMJD or, um, okay, I can't pronounce it, but you guys know what it is. It's like when you your jaw locks from its joints. 
It could have been prevented if I had had regular dental checkups, which is very costly here in the Philippines. But now I have braces to help fix it, and I think it's kind of working. But once in a while, if I forget to have my chin supported when I yawn, I can still <laughs> feel my jaw clicking away from its joints, but not to the point of locking again. <laughs> It was very traumatic that up until now that I'm in my 30s and I still have nightmares about it. Damn. Ooh. I can't even... I, I had lockjaw one time and it wasn't even that bad. Yeah. Yes. Okay, maybe it wasn't lockjaw then. But I bit onto something and I remember like I felt like I couldn't open my mouth to let go of that thing that I was biting on. And it was mm. so creepy. It was mm. freaking me out, and I thought that I was going to accidentally... It, I think it was like a piece of fruit or something, and I was so scared I would accidentally swallow it and start mm. choking, and no one could even pry my mouth open. I don't understand the science behind lockjaw. I don't understand the science. Like, how does it lock? Who has the key? Do you know what I mean? Oh, my God. Just imagine. What are we doing? <laughs> That's for testing it out. <laughs> me too. How did you fix Like, how did you... Like, fix it. After a while, it went away. Mm. And I don't know how long it was. It felt like a really long time, but I'm assuming it was very short. That's why I don't think maybe it was lockjaw, maybe it was something else, but That's I why felt they say, like, if you stuff something, like, a, like, like a round oh. into your mouth, yeah. you can't take it out. Yeah, as soon as you stick it in, you're stuck. Because your jaw just locks mm -hmm. it. Wow. Yeah. And I heard that it happens to dogs, too, and it freaks me out. <gasps> what? That's why all of Mango's toys are really big. So she can't really, like, put the whole thing oh. in her mouth, you know? I didn't know that's why. I just <laughs> thought that's why he, she can't swallow it. <laughs> Dana, you look like you went through some You look like you have a weird <laughs> mustache, bro. Come on. Hi, Steph. I watch and listen to your videos and podcasts religiously, and I love you, Dan Dan, and Mr. Mango Bud so, so much. I have been enjoying learning a lot about those experiences, so I figured I would submit one as well. I'm originally Moroccan, a small country on the border of North Africa, but I grew up in the UK. I lived mostly in safe areas in the outskirts of London and had always attended private schools. This meant that I was always super sheltered and not fully aware of certain dangers. Morocco is a beautiful country, but there are some very scary and manipulative people there just like any place really. When I was 8 years old, I traveled to Morocco with my family to visit my family there and generally I stayed in Casablanca. That year, we decided to travel to Marrakesh, the most touristic city in all of Morocco, and spent a few days there. One thing about my grandma is that she always buys me small animals to look after, whether it be a small kitten or a chick or so on. That year, it happened to be baby bunnies. I was over the moon and I was so attached. I took them with me on the car ride to the hotel. And one thing that is very prevalent to this story is that the hotel Oh my god, no. Hotel. I already know where this is gonna go. One thing about the hotel is that it had so many cats. Oh. What I mean by that is that most of the hotel was just bungalows and sort of separate housing across these gardens. Generally, there are a lot of street cats in Morocco, but there was a rather substantial amount in this particular hotel. We had a lovely stay in the hotel and all was good and dandy until the last day. Because we were packing to leave and moving stuff in and out of the bungalow, my parents left the door open and for a period that I was not there, I believe a cat must have snatched up my baby bunny and it was probably not alive anymore. No way. Me looking for my bunny in the midst of the chaos, I started crying. I was so desperate, I was making a slight commotion to be honest. I was outside the bungalow looking in the bushes and telling my sister about it. Behind the room, a gardener comes out claiming he saw my bunny and has it with him. <gasps> oh my god, this is not the story I was thinking it was going to be. The f gardener is suspicious, okay? I'm telling you, who's suspicious, the cat or the gardener? The human. Gardener. I mean, yeah. I, I just don't see a cat eating another rabbit. Yeah, I feel well, you did. Yeah. Well, yeah, but... They, would, they like to chase small animals. Oh my god, do you know why dogs like squeaky toys? Because it sounds like a squirrel. When they or like bite it. little animal they're killing. Really? Yeah. What the? But were the was the cat like not trained? A stray cat. A stray cat. There but, was a TikTok I saw of a uh -huh. cat came to the front door and dropped a bird. No way. <laughs> oh shit. The owner was like, "Please stop giving me these gifts. They're not nice." Oh my god! Just dead birds? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How did they even catch them? Bro, cats are crazy. Cats they're... can hop and jump and mm -hmm. like. Is it? Are... Rabbits are faster, no? No, not the fat ones I've seen. <laughs> the fat ones I've seen. I was over the moon and I jumped up and followed him blindly. We were halfway across the grounds when he grabbed my arm and was tugging me along. 
My sister is now realizing the danger and shouts to my dad and I got chartered back to the bungalow in sh and I got carted back to the bungalow in shame. Everyone was so worried but also very mad that I was so careless. Had I followed that old man, I probably wouldn't be here telling this story today. Bits. Okay, this freaks me out because I feel like we've all I don't know about you guys, but I've had like a moment in my childhood where I think back to it and it's similar to this and I'm like, if I had just followed that one person or if I had gone and met with that one person, I probably would not be here. That's so terrifying. Yeah. Do you feel like in a parallel universe, there's like a different alternate ending? Oh, I always yeah. think about that when I think about these like random choices that I have made. I think that's why deja vu happens. I think that's from our parallel un universe. Mm -hmm. You know, it happened mm -hmm. and we get to experience that. I think also dreams are like parallel universe too. I have some bizarre dreams. Yeah. I had a dream, um, BTS moved in next to Did us. Okay. Yeah, okay. this okay. apartment too, right, like right. right there. So I was, um, <clears throat> I was kind of excited. But Bro, I, gotta, I would try to be kinda cool. Kinda excited. I try to be cool. Yeah. So I was I will start working outside as they go in and in and out. I saw Jin. Mm -hmm. He's really nice. He's probably the nicest out of all. Okay. And then I saw um, Jimin once. Mm -hmm. While he was like glowing. <laughs> he was like getting a package outside, signing something. He was like glowing <laughs> for some reason. Like, oh, oh my shit. god. <laughs> Why is he glowing? I, I even went up to Jin. I was like, hey, if you guys ever need something, need some help or whatever, let me know. I got you. Okay. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And then we like shook hands or whatever. Bro, it was so real. I woke up. I was like, my, my head was buzzing. I was like, oh my god. That felt so real. And he was so disappointed that BTS are not our neighbors. So is that a parallel universe, then? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> he genuinely woke up and was so hey, excited. It could happen, though. Mm. And, that, and you'll feel deja vu. They were chill though, they were nice. They were so. chill? Yeah, they're nice people. <laughs> I bet they were. You do have personal experience, right? Yeah, so guys, nice. go tell everyone, we have personal experience. We met BTS, they were our neighbors, and they were so nice, and Jimin was glowing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to take off my lips. <sighs> Why? Why? Does it feel weird or something? It's so dry. Yeah, uh, it's like the Sahara Desert. Like for, mmm, yeah. It's crazy. Is that good? Yeah, I mean, it's a new look. It's like <laughs> it's outline. a outline. 2.0. Okay. Hey, Stephanie. I'm a senior high school student, and now here I am writing to you to tell you my most traumatic story that I shared with my older and younger sister because I need to let it out for once. It all started years ago when I was you know, early in middle school. When my mom announced to me and my sisters that a relative will be moving in to live with us. It was my grandpa's eldest brother who had nowhere to go, so my mom took him in. He was a very old man in his early 80s maybe, chubby, and he's a specialist in Chinese massages. My mom gave him the room downstairs on the first floor, separated from the rest of us who were on the second floor. My sisters and I never knew him, so we were very shy around him, but he's very friendly, and my mom kept pushing us to be friendly because you know, it's my grandpa's brother, it's family. He would give us snacks and give us massages as a way to get closer to us. Am I traumatized or is this not going well? Ah, uh, it's not going well. So we would slowly get along with him. We would come upstairs to his room to hang out and watch the TV in his room, help him with the garden he made on the third floor of our house, and he would sometimes even see us off for school or even pick us up. It was like that the, for the first few months, but slowly, he started asking for kisses as a way for us to show love. It was nothing new. I mean, I kissed my parents and sister all the time, and it was actually a pretty normal thing in my Chinese family, but it was confusing for me when he started asking me, especially for kisses on his lips. And I was wow. young, clueless, and naive, so I did as he said, since I remembered I pecked my parents on their lips when I was a toddler. Early middle school is like really old to be. That's super old. And I meant like super old as in, you know, for him to be asking for kisses. I mean, I think it's weird for anyone other than parents to be asking for kisses, yeah. but so bizarre. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did ask Sophie for kisses, okay? But it's like, I go poof poof. And I get right here. Cheek. Yeah, but you know what Sophie does? Sophie doesn't like to kiss people. She likes to be kissed. So when you go Sophie Popo and you give her your cheek, she gives you her, she, her cheek. She gives you her cheek. <laughs> she gives you her face. Maybe she want to do the, the cheek to cheek. Oh, kiss the like. French kiss. Ah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe she's cultured like that. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Also, um, wait, I'm so sorry. To, before we get into the serious part, Sophie slapped my sister across the face. If that's not a horror story, I don't know what is. She decked my sister across the face. If you guys have a two-year-old, can you let us know what to do when your two-year-old starts slapping you across the face? My sister had the TV on, right? She turned off the TV. Sophie brings her the remote as in 
She turned the TV back on. <laughs> and my sister looked at her and very nicely said, Sophie, like, TV on the TV on the Like, we can't watch TV. We got to turn it off. And Sophie looked at her, digested this information, and slapped her across the face. <laughs> my sister said she stood there in shock. <laughs> she said, I can't believe I've gotten to this. Like, if this was freaking 10 years ago at a club, I would have gotten into a fight with that girl. <laughs> but nope. It's a child. It's a two-year-old. It's her child. So yeah. what, what can you do? What like, can you do? To discipline. Everyone's like, beat her up. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a taste of her medicine. Within a few days, it all turned strange and scary when he started pushing his tongue into my mouth. Mm. Like a full-on makeout. Oh my god, bro. I remember being paralyzed and I grew scared, but I just felt so hopeless. I let him continue until we heard someone coming and that's when he finally let me go. It was my dad going down the stairs to open the store and I came out of my grandpa's room quiet. I was so scared that I acted like nothing happened. I just said hi to my dad and ran upstairs into the room that I shared with my sister to lay down on the bed and process everything. Just that afternoon of that day, I had to go downstairs to my grandpa's room to give him a snack. My mom told me to give him a snack. So he let me in and he shut the door. I was alone with him in his dark room and that was when he told me to lay down on his bed and he crawled on top of me. Then he started kissing me on the lips and shoving his tongue in my mouth like crazy. Once again, I was paralyzed and scared. I stayed still and unable to think, but my fear doubled when he slid his hand into my pants and started pressing his finger into my private area and I started rebelling and pushing him weakly because I was in pain and it hurt so much that my paralyzedness turned into panic. He eventually let me go when I lied that my sister called for me. I managed to convince him that he did, just didn't hear it and I rushed out of there. I went straight to our bathroom, shut the door and I started examining my private area because it hurt so much. But since it was only red, I decided I was fine and I just tried to forget everything that happened. That night, my older sister went, for, went to me for a talk. And that's when I found out that my grandpa has also been molesting my older sister. Also the same night when my sisters and I were alone in our room, I was woken up and I saw my grandpa was in our room touching my older sister. I jumped up and I asked him what he was doing and it was then that he said good night and scurried away. I went to comfort my older sister before we went back to bed again. Luckily he didn't come back that night. But ever since, my older sister and I would have meetings each night to talk about if anything happened to us that day, since we were so scared to tell our parents about it. <sighs> my younger sister joined us. Despite her being so young, we found out that my grandpa showed her his wee wee. Oh my gosh. It scared the f out of us, but we made a promise to each other to protect each other that night. Whenever one of us sisters was sent to go downstairs, we would find either two sisters to come along, basically not let each other go alone because we can get away if we're not alone. But when one of us couldn't find a sister, we would call out so they would have an excuse to leave grandpa. Even though grandpa made excuses to give us massages and treats, my sisters and I knew by now that it was just his excuses to grope us. The room door my sisters and I share was very old and broken, so there was no lock, and it would scare us to go to sleep in fear grandpa would come in the middle of the night, or even peek into the room to stare at us. But soon, my older sister managed to convince my dad to change the lock. So we got a lock. So we would lock the door from inside each night before going to sleep. But I just remember how scary it was when I watched the door handle move that night. My grandpa would try to open the door and find out when it was locked. Once I came home with my dad after shopping and was going to the kitchen to drop it off, that's when we pushed the door open to see grandpa rising up while my sister was on the floor crying and shaking. We came in late and my grandpa managed to convince my dad that my sister just fell while I was helping my sister up again, not saying the truth of what was going on. Luckily, my younger sister listens to me and my older sister to never go downstairs to our grandpa's room or even follow him anywhere alone. My younger sister was so young and we were really worried for her. A few months of living in fear and paranoia, my sisters and I finally got the courage to tell our mom after dinner one day. It was only the four of us. When we told her everything about it, my mom was in disbelief. She felt utterly betrayed and she cried when my older sister and I cried and it was a mess. My mom told us to continue protecting each other and locking our room every night while she went to tell my dad about it. The next morning, my mom went to talk to us in our room, just the four of us, and told us what happened last night after sending us to bed. Our mom told us that the garden on the third floor was trashed and destroyed, destroyed by my dad's rage. It turned out last night my dad let his anger out by trashing grandpa's garden on the third floor. I still remember it to this day. It was a horrible mess and I realized how scary my dad could be, especially after seeing the garden scissors left stabbed on a plank of food on the trashed garden. A plank of wood. 
You see, my mom had to tell my dad to stay calm before she told him about everything because she knew my dad would storm down and murder the grandpa, but my mom managed to convince him to stay calm. My dad is typically very kind and quiet, but it scared me when my mom told us that my dad could thoughtlessly go and murder our grandpa and bury him in the woods. Scarier because my dad bikes as a hobby, knowing the most isolated places in the woods. My mom did some research between our other relatives and it turns out that disgusting grandpa had molested another relative in the past. And they didn't tell my parents about it. My grandpa was kicked out soon after. He was sent away and was told never to show himself again. In exchange, my parents won't call the cops on him. Even my mom's parents, my grandparents who live in a city away, were fuming and beyond mad. But that disgusting grandpa still has the nerve to ask to live with my mom's parents and say that my sisters and I were the ones seducing him. Obviously, my grandpa was scared away by my mom's dad and he was gone to somewhere, I don't know, I never saw him again. Or so I thought, mother her, that disgusting old man came back two years later to retrieve all the stuff he abandoned at our house with a truck to bring them. My sister and I weren't aware at the moment and we had no idea why our mom told us to stay upstairs. My younger sister and I peeked down from the second floor and saw that disgusting old man and it was then that we understood and hid in our rooms. My mom was shouting and slapped that old man saying how dare you show your face again and my mom stepped forward because she was holding my, she was keeping my dad back because he could have totally killed him in that moment. That old man left not long after and my mom came back upstairs telling us that he was gone. We were all creeped out and my dad was in a bad mood for days after that. Luckily it was for real this time. We never saw him again to this day. I only heard of him. He's sick and dying slowly, my mom said. That was recent and when I was already away from home for high school at another city, I got so scared when my mom called me at night stressed out. Okay, she told me that the old man's picture of him passed out in the middle of the street was shared to my family consisting of the older relatives group chat and it was thrown everywhere who would pick him up and take care of him and the relatives were swaying for my parents to pick him up because we we took him in once what? by now everyone knows he's a disgusting predator hearing that i got so scared and i remembered crying in fear and i was so worried for my sisters who are still living with my parents i'm away from them and safer and i couldn't worry less about myself i was just so scared for my sisters my parents were so strong to refuse to take that man defended by defended by my mom's parents too. In the end, that old man was picked up and dropped off at a hospital by another relative. Actually, my dad doesn't mind to go pick up that disgusting old man, but my dad will go and return home without him. He'd probably kill him and bury him in the woods. Bury him alive, maybe even. Nobody will come find that man because he has no family and nobody cares about him. Literally nobody in the family will be in search of that disgusting man and won't care if nothing is ever heard from him again. My dad is honestly kind of scary, but I remind myself that's how much he loves us and is protective of us and our family. My family is safe and I want it to stay that way forever. But I heard that that old man is out of the hospital and wondering where and I don't know and I don't care. I just don't need to see him or run into him ever again. But if I do, I doubt I won't be scared. But I definitely would be angry. I will not think twice to scream and kick him. Ever since that traumatic experience, I became very wary and very distant of boys. Physical touch by boys other than my close relatives give me chills and anxiety. And I have a phobia of older men ever since. Now, I know there's no need to be scared to tell my parents about anything. I have the best parents than ever and I know that they would do anything in their power to help and protect their daughters if we simply just tell them what we're going through. That is amazing, honestly. I think like to have that, that's like real parenting. Like when you, your children feel safe enough to tell you anything. Thank you for reading this, Stephanie, Steffi Anse, and maybe Dan Dan too. It made me a lot better writing this, and I hope everyone can learn from my experience. Stay safe, girls, and let's protect each other. Stay healthy, and let's all forget about that terrible past to live on happily. Much love to you, Stephanie, and storytell your storytelling and Steffi Anse's laugh always made my day. If I was with you on the street and we ran into your grandpa's older brother, I would help you kick him. We're going to jail that night, bits. We're going to be cuddling in jail in in prison okay okay sorry next story i can't believe i forgot about this but my aunt just reminded me and i wish i could remember the victim's names but it shouldn't be hard to find it happened in janesville wisconsin around 1996. whoa 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 <laughs> the victim's names okay a few years before 1996, my aunt had a neighbor that would really freak us all out. He would scream at the top of his lungs all hours of the day and night. He'd say really scary things like threatening to sexually assault the woman with him. He'd say things like, I will R word your eye sockets after I rip out your eyeballs with my bare hands. And then you would hear the woman apologize and beg him not to hurt her again. Of course we would call the cops. They would come, 
talked to him, searched his house, and told us that he was there alone multiple times. They informed us that he had a mental illness including multiple personalities and that he would talk in different voices. He even spoke with them using a few different voices. The story always stuck with us kids and we'd often talk about the guy who would yell at himself. It was like a campfire scary story that we tell our friends. What? Then in 1996, we got the shock of our lives. Turns out he has a daughter that nobody knew about. She was 12 and she was just found in a secret room in his house Whoa. with her mother who nobody had seen in many years and was considered a missing person. His daughter was never brought outside in her entire life and at only 12 years old, she weighed what a four year old would weigh. She couldn't walk, couldn't talk besides grunting and nobody even knew that she ever existed. Turns out he didn't have multiple personalities and he wasn't yelling at himself. He was yelling at them the entire freaking time. When my aunt had been his neighbor, his daughter would have been about four years old. I will never forget the sound of his yelling and the feeling of confusion as a kid being told that it was just one person. I wish we could have saved her sooner. She spent eight more years in that hell because p people believed his fake mental illness. It blows my mind to this day. That is so scary. <laughs> his own daughter. Listen, like, what? I don't even know how, like, what? I wonder, okay, please let me know. Do you feel extra vigilant in face of neighbors now? Like, do you grow up and now you're extra, like, cautious and almost, like, nosy, I wonder? I feel like I would head into nosy territory because maybe I feel like I lost my chance to help someone then, so maybe I keep exerting that nosiness later on in life. I wonder, too, how that affects, like, the neighbors yeah. as well. I mean, obviously, it, the neighbor's Not trauma is neighbor, nothing compared to the just children, the but... whole world. I always think about that in a plane. I hate that feeling. That's why what? I hate opening the window when, like, when you're just high enough that you see the grid of houses, you know, and it's all a grid because mm -hmm. that's how most, like, suburban areas are planned. So all these houses are right next to each other and they almost look identical from the rooftops. And it's just like this feeling of right now I am over these houses and it's a numbers game, really. Like, in how, in how many of these houses is someone being R worded, abused, held hostage, maybe tied up in a basement somewhere? Because it's a numbers game. Like, it, it, it's statistically, there's got to be a specific number of houses that I am currently literally on top of that have victims in the house. And it freaks me out. Like, it literally makes me have one of those moments where you feel like life is not real and it's just making you so stressed out and you feel so detached. I hate it. Oh my gosh. So I've always had a big love for reptiles and amphibians. I'm not sure why. I just love things that tend to be underloved, I guess. This is reminding me of the goat story. About a year ago, I had four geckos, two bigger lizards, Geico. one snake, and seven frogs. <laughs> Anyways. Geico? <laughs> Geico. Are you guys being serious? I'm being serious. What do you mean? It's Five minutes? Four Geico. But it's Geico's. Geico's. Not geckos, Geico's. It's Geico's, yeah. To okay. save you 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> or more. So she had four fucking Geico's. Like, how That's many cars 60%. do you have? Dang. That's 60%? Yeah, saving 60%. Bro. That's insane. You never yeah. heard of, like, State Farm or something? Nah, Geico. She had four Geico's, two State Farms, <laughs> one Allstate, and uh, All seven Mercury's. <laughs> Wow, okay. Anyways, I don't know. Four geckos, two lizards, one snake, and seven frogs. Get it together. <laughs> wow. It's not that hard. <laughs> I just had a really weird thought. I feel like my dog would eat your frogs. Dog would eat frogs? I feel like, because, you know. The snake would eat frogs. Yeah, oh, for sure. that's true. Yeah. They would all eat each other. How does that feel to know that your pets would eat each other? Because maybe it's how I feel. Because I know for a fact Mango would eat Tiger. Oh, if we sure. give her the chance. Is not Tiger stronger though? <laughs> not mentally. <laughs> <laughs> not mentally. <laughs> I had a friend over who was also very passionate about reptiles. But her love was kind of weird. She always made jokes about how she loved her pets so much that she would make out with them. I thought she was kidding of course and I shrugged it off. One day when she came over, my mom called me to the kitchen to help her clean after dinner. I was in there for about 5 minutes and during that time she took two of my geckos out, my snake and all of my frogs and let them all quote, play together. This was really weird to me because she seemed like she knew more about animals 
to know that my snake was ready to eat all nine of the other what animals. The fuck? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I put all the animals back, and the next time she came over, I decided to put one of those hidden camera pens in my room just to see what was going on. Like, I already had one, so it's not like it costed any money or anything, okay? I left the room again and I opened the app to watch her and it didn't take her long before she opened my snake's cage, took out the tongs used for feeding, and grabbed one of my geckos and dangled it by its tail in front of my snake. I would have interrupted by now if I hadn't known that my snake was going to eat it because it, had, it just ate a big rat. It's the circle of life, you know. I like snakes. I think that they're so mystical. Like right. they're such a vibe but I can't be around them. Because I feel bitch, okay. like it'll choke me <laughs> to death. And I, see, this is the reason that I can't be around animals and it's not just snakes because animals can smell fear. And I'm a very fearful, 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 I'm a freak in the sheets, okay? <laughs> and no. they can smell it. Do you remember? What? When our grandpa used to, uh, oh, yeah. kill it with he, the stick? Um, he killed a snake with a stick. You found one in the backyard and yeah. she was so scared and then, uh, we were all scared. Actually. You were there too? Yeah. Yeah, and Stephanie then, told me this story, yeah. and then she cried like crazy after. Yeah, and then yeah. Grandpa was like, hey, let me show you how it's done. And that was the moment that, like, my view of my grandpa shattered. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how could he fucking murder an animal, you know? Oh, yeah. Officer, that one! <laughs> yeah, that 90-year-old man with white hair, gotta lock him up. He's a danger. <laughs> danger to society. Anyway, but when she realized my snake wasn't hungry, she put the gecko back, tapped my snake as some sort of punishment, I guess, and she started removing her pi- Removing her pants? Okay, what is Guess she doing? Guess the next- No, She's man. gonna pee on the snake. She took my what? snake and tried to shove it up her you know. What? And then I came in and I cussed her out. I was so fucking horrified. I know that people are weirded out by me keeping reptiles, but there's no way in hell that that wasn't creepy. I kicked her out and I called the cops who did nothing because they don't take interest in my reptiles. And to think that this couldn't get any worse, two months later, I saw her walking around in circles really slowly around my mailbox, almost as if she was really stoned and she couldn't navigate herself properly. I called the police again and explained that, is this like stalking or harassment or something? And they did nothing. This was three months ago and I haven't seen her since, but this was just a really Really weird situation bro what is going on um, um i knew someone the fact that this is not even the only one that i knew and this is not okay the other person that's a whole nother story but this one was really weird and i feel like she was trolling us because definitely something was wrong with her there was a girl in my like um bible study class <laughs> i know i went to church weird right there was a girl in my bible study class and uh -huh. this was when i had transferred to like this big church at one point and she just always had a weird vibe like she always seemed out of it and drugged up but i know that she wasn't on drugs so maybe it was like a mental health thing i'm not really sure but she was always definitely like something about her was off she didn't talk much and when she did it didn't feel like there was like she wasn't really communicating with you like if someone was really drunk and you're trying to communicate with them i feel like they're not really soaking in the information that's kind of how she felt well one day we're sitting there and this is like during the summer and during the summer you do some crazy at church it's like weird it should be illegal honestly you have to like sit there in a circle and like confess but like we're not even catholic we were Presbyterian or something. No, we were Methodist. No, that church was Presbyterian. Who cares? Anyway, we're sitting in a circle <laughs> confessing and we all have to like pray for each other's confessions. Uh -huh. So like I would say like, oh, I feel really bad because I did A, B, C, and D and everyone would be like, okay, we'll pray for you, Stephanie. Well, this girl literally out of nowhere just goes, I had sex with my dog. Oh my God, I think you told me about yes. this. Yes, and it was like the most, what? And that's not the only girl. I had a friend who knew someone who literally had sex with their dog and they had like proof and stuff. And that's like a whole different story. Oh but this God. one was in youth group. And she was saying this in like a group of like, I think like seven girls. And there was no laughter after. We were expecting it to be like some sort of sick joke. Maybe she just doesn't have the same humor as us, but she didn't really do laugh. And, wow, honestly, the Bible study teacher was crazy. What do you mean? Because she's just like, we'll pray for you. I'm like, I don't think we got to get the dog. No, there's more, we got to go get the that. dog. Like, we got to save a dog. Yeah. But she's just like, we'll pray for you. And then I told my mom about it, and she was like, don't get involved. Remember what happens when you get involved? Because I stole a dog in Korea, you know? <laughs> okay, that's another story Wait, what? for another day. No, she rescued a dog. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, if belong to someone. Okay. Anyway, the next one I have to reenact it for you, okay? I got possessed. What the f What are you doing? Sorry, it says I got possessed. 
twerks intensively. Oh, why would you twerk that though? Well, they no, got, not you, but no, but they got possessed. You know, they got possessed. Ah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Never mind. What? That's not the pos. I thought she was gonna be like, I was possessed and I was doing some crazy shit in bed. So I guess you can say this experience was more traumatizing for the people around me than myself. Since they were the ones that remembered most of it. Which leads me to realize, possessed or not, I traumatize people all the time. Oh, so great. <laughs> less than 10 years ago, I visited Korea with my family. <laughs> I was around 6 or 7 back then. Honestly, one of the best holidays in my life so far. The food, the opportunity to bully other families, annoying boys on the tour bus. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, I like it. I like a boy bully, okay? Sorry, I'm kidding. Protect the boys. They need protecting. My family consisted of my dad, my mom, and my older sister. We had stopped by at a hotel for the night in one of their larger rooms with king-size mattresses. We fell asleep for the night, but then I awoke, and I saw. I was on the floor in a different room, in a different bed. Our room had changed from a modern styled one with large mattresses to one with traditional on the floor beds. It was morning and my mom and dad were already up. I asked them how it happened and they told me about the giant cockroaches in the other room Ew. and how we had to change rooms. Now at the time my mother was terrified of cockroaches so I bought the story but now, now I know the truth. It was six years after that night when my parents finally told me the truth. Maybe when they realized I was old enough or that we were far enough from that incident that I wouldn't be so petrified from it. But I honestly feel like no matter how late they told me, I would still be terrified. And here's the truth. That night, 10 years ago, my parents had slept through just fine when they awoke to a noise, a flushing sound, which was quite normal until my father realized it came from our own toilet. He called out to see if any of us were using the restroom, but there was no reply. And there were all the four of us lying in the bed. This unnerved him, but perhaps it was simply an automatic system every once in a while to keep the toilet clean. My dad, they had prepared to go back to sleep when the light switched on. My mom forced my dad to off them. Then the toilet lights turned on again, and the main light, and my father turned them both off, but at this point my mom was making him chant the Lord's Prayer over and over again. They said it was silent for a moment, then everything broke loose. The lights in the bathroom, our main room, and the hallway outside flickered on and off continuously. The bathroom toilet flushed multiple times and the television turned on, but nothing was playing. It was only static and a strange sound and it was almost like a cackle. Bits, honestly, at this point, I respect them so much for not sh**ing their pants. Bro, nothing's like impressing your kids by telling them this. The television was screaming, some distorted voice. My dad switched off the television, but the lights were not turning off. He dialed the hotel phone to call the counter at 4 a.m. in the morning, which was awkward, but at this point, Point, social anxiety who he asked them to turn the main switch off for the lights in our unit the call ended and my parents waited for the lights to turn off when the phone rang again they picked up and the staff informed them as the lights continued to flicker on and off that the main switch had never been on but this point the commotion was dying down and they had planned to just continue their night like every dumb character in a horror film when it finally went silent which should have been alarming but they paid no attention to it and the silence was all they had hoped for then a body sat up in the bed. It was six-year-old me. I was often sensitive to these things and they thought I had woken up from the noise. They reached out to coax me to, you know, lay back down like it's gonna be okay. But I turned and, and smiled. smiled. Not the kind of smile their cheerful six-year-old would have given, but one that was lopsided. Like Sophie smile. Oh my God, Sophie smiles like this. <laughs> Like, you'll do the most to entertain her and she'll go, Devil child. I'm just kidding, I love her so much, okay? Almost as if the ends of my mouth were spread too far out. It was like a pleased smile. One that was proud of whatever had happened to them. Like I had done whatever had happened to them. They were taken aback but still attempted to check up on me and I stilled for a moment staring at them and then I laughed. Okay, I'm getting creeped out. But it wasn't me, it was something else. It was like a cackle, a downright mocking roar of laughter. Like it was entertained by their fear. And at that moment, the entire room was in chaos again. Lights turned on, the toilet flushed, and the television switched on once more. And then I ooh, passed out. And my dad grabbed me and my sister and ran out of the room with my mom. They ended up asking for a new room from the hotel staff in the middle of the night, and we switched to a different room. From this experience, I learned three things. Firstly, always knock on the door 
before entering a hotel room and yeah. make peace with whatever might be in the space before you move in. It could be hotels, new houses, or sleepover locations. We mm -hmm. just want to make sure that we are welcomed. Secondly, I have understood the true definition of I scare myself because damn. And thirdly, my parents must really love me because if I saw myself possessed, I'm going to be up for adoption. Okay. <laughs> But here I am, 10 years later, still loved by them. So really, I must just be super lovable, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Mr. Mango Buttocks. Gotta assume that's the full name, okay? And Dan Dan for bringing so much <laughs> what, joy. What is, what is she <laughs> Mr. Me? Mango Buttocks. Yo, you should change your name to that. You should change your name to Mr. Mango Buttocks. B Buttocks. Why are you guys so into this? I love it. I don't know, it sounds fun. It's Does so not... good. Mr. Mango Chocolate Highway. <laughs> huh? Chocolate Highway? What's that? Wow, thank you for bringing so much joy into my life. Your BAMs and podcasts are just my favorite thing. I feel like I'm learning. Oh, well, you, you, after that possessed story, you better be learning how not to be a victim and how not to be a perpetrator, okay? <laughs> okay? And being able to contemplate so much about different things while still laughing and enjoying myself with your family dynamics. I usually can't even get through one 10 minute video on YouTube, but when I watch your videos, it's usually five hours straight, which is honestly why my screen time probably fing hates you. But don't worry, I love you and it makes up for it. My mom even recognizes you from my screen, which is a total win if you ask me. And your podcasts are my go-to when I'm walking home alone and scared because your voice makes me feel safe, which is honestly a little concerning since who the hell feels safe from listening to a true crime podcast? But hey, maybe if creepy men see me laughing at such content because of your amazing ability to make me smile, it'll scare them away. I love you so much. Keep doing you. Or maybe you should just give them your six-year-old smile. <laughs> I really need to know, does that work? You know what I was thinking about in the Uber the other day? The Uber was freaking me out, okay? I was literally thinking this, and this is so bad, but the Uber was kind of freaking me out. Listen, we've had such good experiences with Ubers in New York, but this one was kind of a little bit weird. And I was just thinking to myself, I am so thankful that I could poop right now. Because worst case scenario, I'm a poop right now. Like if he tries to do anything, I'm a poop right now. And I was like, that's actually really good that I'm on the verge of pooping right now. Pretty good defense. Okay, that time that I was terrorized by monkeys. I'd like to preface this story by disclaiming that no animals were harmed in this story. At least not to, on my part or to my knowledge. So a few years back, my neighborhood was terrorized by what I presume was a family of monkeys. Now, my area is not the least rural. We were suburban and lived about 10 minutes away from a mall. However, we do live in a tropical country, so wild animals were, though not common, an expected sight. At the beginning of their reign of terror, I honestly did not care about the critters, as I was well into my teens and preparing for an important exam, but the neighborhood had been giving out these notices about the monkeys going around stealing side mirrors and a reminder to cover your vehicle's side mirrors if it can't be folded in. <laughs> what? <laughs> they steal the mirrors? These monkeys are a little vain, don't you think? Okay, can I tell you something about what? monkeys? What? Was it a Reddit thread about how there was this guy who had started working at the zoo and all of the monkey keepers were telling him, okay, like you got to put the bowl in through the cage doors and just like slip it in and that's it, right? And they come to eat. So the first day at the job, they're slipping in the bowls, mm -hmm. right? And in one of them, the monkey wasn't waiting. So he's like, okay, that's weird. Should I go in and like give the food to the monkey, find the monkey? Because I want the monkey to eat and know it's food time, right? How do they not know it's food time? And he was about to open the cage door and walk in and the other other trainers, the other zookeepers are screaming at him like, what are you doing? Don't ever do that, right? And from the corner of his eye, hiding behind the tree, he sees the monkey staring at him. And he said the monkey almost looked disappointed that he didn't come in. It's scary, it's man. Scary. Monkey scares me, man. Monkeys scare me. Um, some people's dogs scare me. I have a friend who has a dog. Her dog scares me. I've never met her dog, but every time she sends me a picture of her dog, and she says sometimes it's weird. Sometimes she looks at her dog and she feels like he's about to start talking to her. <laughs> like it's no. If you, oh my god, I gotta show you a picture. Okay, I don't want to. That's show so you. cute. Yeah, Wait. the dog is cute, but the dog is thinking some. Sh Wait a the minute. dog is thinking some. Sh <laughs> the eyes are closed, but the dog is thinking. Yo. The dog is plotting. The dog is thinking. The dog is plotting murder. Yeah, and then I showed her pictures of my dogs. Well, she's met my dogs, and she says, not a thought in there. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing. So sometime after the announcement, we were hit by the thieving monkeys. My mother's car was missing one of its side mirrors. We were truly puzzled by how the monkeys got the side mirror out as my mom owned a Range Rover that folds the side mirrors automatically when the engine is off. I guess they just wrestled it with brute strength. I mean, those little things are pretty freaking strong, I tell you. You might be thinking, what's so scary about a few monkeys running side mirror heists? Of course, 
Of course, that's not all they stole. They'd stolen many a things. They'd stolen chickens, free range, raised by a neighbor. Stolen children's toys that were left behind in the yard. Stolen fruits from people's trees. Stolen clothes, stolen shoes, stolen toothpaste. I'll get into that in a little bit. I won't tell you about the time that one of the monkeys stole my favorite shoe, but long story short, my dad found my shoe discarded on the side of the road, seemingly bitten into shreds. I shall carry this grievance to my grave. Damn you, you fucking monkeys. I digress. So what I actually wanted to tell you is about my encounter with that monkey. So at that time, my house had just finished renovating and one of the newer additions to the house included a bright and shiny new water tank that was placed directly above my newly extended room. Now, if you recall, the monkeys like shiny reflective things judging by their pattern of stealing side mirrors. So while I didn't see them, I could hear the monkeys having a party on the roof, scratching and slamming the water tank. You can imagine just how eerie oh, the sounds were regardless of the time. They would keep me up at night, making me wonder if it was really the monkeys partying it up or some sort of ghost demon trying to claw its way into my room. Again, I digress. So anyway, another new addition to my room with the own personal ensuite bathroom. Before the renovations, I had to share with my brother, which sucked because that meant I always had to take earlier showers so we don't fight over it in the morning after school. This bathroom was at the very end of my room in the newly extended area. One side was facing the backyard and it had a small window on the upper side of the wall for ventilation and natural lighting. And it was constantly kept open for those very few reasons. Big mistake. Remember when I said that monkeys like to hang out at our water tank? Well, one of them decided one day to straight up jump into my bathroom through that tiny little ventilation window. The first time it happened, I was fr The first time? <laughs> I was freaking scared and didn't dare do anything, so I just sort of waited out the noise. It sounded like the monkey was just running and jumping around like a kid on a trampoline. When the noise died down, I opened the bathroom door slightly and peeked into my bathroom with trepidation, worried that the critter wrecked my bathroom. Thankfully, there were no monkeys in sight and nothing was broken, but my bathroom had a bunch of dirty small animal footprints along the walls, floor, mirror, and sink. And there was a suspicious small bite mark on the toothpaste tube that had been displaced from the cup that I'd used as a container for my toothbrush and toothpaste. I got to cleaning and tried to zen myself and hoped that they don't decide to trespass into my bathroom again. But luck was not on my side, as they reappeared the next day. This time, I felt braver, so when I heard the noise started, I began banging on my door as though we were in competition to see who could make the most noise pop pollution. When the monkey didn't seem to relent, I burst the door open, accompanied by my trusted Mr. Broomstick that I'd stolen from the kitchen, along with a nifty little biological reaction called Adrenaline Rush. I'm sorry, are you an author? I'm sorry, you gotta write a book. This monkey reacted quickly when it saw me, big and strong in all my five foot one inch glory, and screeched <laughs> as it hopped from the sink to the wall and launched itself out the window with my fucking toothpaste. <laughs> what the heck was it doing with my toothpaste? I had just opened a fresh new tube a couple of days before. I was more flabbergasted than angry or scared at that moment, to be honest. I told my parents about the encounter soon after, and my brother helped me close the tiny window, and it's still closed to this day, even though there's no more monkeys here. I have no idea what happened to the monkeys. Some neighbors said they moved away after getting bored of the area. Some said they were taken away by animal control. I honestly don't know. What I do know is that nothing else has been stolen since that day, and the creepy noises at night eventually stopped, and my newer, tub of, and my newer tube of toothpaste lived to see its final squeeze. Wow. She's good at writing. Bruh. You got me emotional about a toothpaste right now. <laughs> to conclude, this story of mine is probably not the scariest animal encounter out there, but it had been a pretty darn anxiety inducing to me. I was lucky the monkey chose to flight rather than fight, as monkeys are known to be rather aggressive when in danger. I've heard stories of people losing ears or noses or chunks of flesh due to monkey attacks. Faces. And I'm thankful that the monkey I'd met was, a, was just as non-confrontational as I am. <laughs> so good. So good! That's scary, okay? Like, Monkeys are so scary. Like, we had some rats in the wall. Once. Oh! That keep it. What? Yeah, there were rats in the attic in one of the apartments we were living at. In LA. It's so creepy because at night, all you hear is just like, <laughs> like scratching. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound wall. like animals, it sounds like someone's scratching. Like, in the wall. Yeah. And then in LA, we had a cricket that found its way into our garage somehow oh, yeah. oh, i heard about this yeah and it was so loud i would have to open the fucking garage door and go stop <laughs> and silence would, oh yeah silence <laughs> 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 
it. That's a great so, solution. And then we would close it, and like five seconds later, I'd be. <laughs> that cricket lived forever. I don't know what that cricket was eating in our garage. Probably my f-ing Christmas tree or something. But <laughs> that cricket lived forever. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Okay, these were some crazy horror stories. But I will see you guys tomorrow for the next spooky season video. Stay safe. Make sure to check out Raycon. Link in the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.